Hello and welcome to Guides.Global. My name is John Howell. I'm the Editorial Director. With me today I have Miguel Manzanares, who's the senior partner of Manzanares International Lawyers, based here in the Costa del Sol in Spain. We're talking today, by way only of a brief introduction, about the subject of child abduction. Miguel, thank you. Um, you have written uh, you and your team have written a guide for Guidestock Global about child abduction and indeed about various other aspects of family law. But we thought it was worthwhile doing this short introduction to the subject because it is such a serious subject, isn't it? Yes. I think probably of all the things I had to deal with as a lawyer, it was one of the most distressing. Yes. Um, can we just get a couple of basic principles out? First of all, it is illegal in almost every country in the world to take the law into your own hands and just take your child back. Yeah, it's uh, of course in Spain is uh, is illegal, and uh, it could uh, even constitute a, a very serious crime. Yes. So, however strongly you feel that your husband or wife has been wrong, and however much you think that the courts might have failed you, you cannot just go buy a plane ticket to wherever they are living and seize your child back. Because if you do that, first of all, you will lose almost all rights that you might otherwise have had. And secondly, you could end up in jail. Yes, of course, you cannot really justify uh, uh, committing a crime because the other party committed already another crime. So yes. you cannot uh, do that. And, uh, and of course, you can really ruin many of your strong rights that you could have about your children by doing that action. Now, if you are a parent of a child and you and the child are living here in the Costa del Sol and you are worried that the other parent might come and grab the child, what should you do? Yeah, prevention uh, in, in these cases is really, it's really difficult, although uh, it could really, you could really uh, use the court to, uh, to, avoid, to avoid this to be happening. If you have the fear that this is going to be happening, you can, of course, use the courts. Uh, the courts of uh, Primera Estancia, which is the, the, the first uh, ordinary court, are understanding of this matter. You can, uh, you can start up this action, you are going to be called quickly to a, a hearing, and then the judge is going to be hearing what is your real plans. Of course, you cannot really start up this case just without any proof. You, you have, have to have a serious worry. You have to, ser have to serious worries, and you have to have certain type of evidence that this is really uh, happening because of, of I don't know, uh, any email or any uh, type of message or your children, depending on the, a on the age of the children, they can really also communicate and witness this situation and you can work in prevention of that. In cases that you don't have that evidence, the only thing that you could do is gathering absolutely every single uh, document and proof of your paternity and uh, proof in this cases and most of them is because of uh, parents that are separated or uh, they are divorced so therefore to have uh, a good uh, copy of the divorce or separation settlement saying uh, that the child should be with you send the child the passport of your child the passport so the copy of all the documentation a good or strong proof of uh, the place where you've been living and uh, is considered your permanent residency to justify this is really the competent court where I'm going to be starting up the action. Uh, so to have a good folder with all these documents is everything you can do once you have really the evidence that this is really about to happen, you can use the court. And also, of course, uh, some self-help in the sense that if you think there's a real danger of this, making sure you have a folder where you have photographs of the child, as you say, a copy of the passport, a copy of the court order saying the child should be with you, so that if your other parent is stupid enough to come to seize the child, you can notify the international enforcement authorities within a matter of minutes, not in a matter of days or weeks. Exactly. Yes. And if you are in that situation, it's worth stressing that the internationally now, in most countries in the world, the authorities will enforce child abduction cases very strongly. They will intervene as soon as they know that 
a parent with a stolen child is in the area, they will intervene, intervene and intervene very, very robustly. Yeah, there is a very strong international collaboration in between the administration of justice of, of almost every country in the world. Uh, this is really taken very seriously by, by uh, almost every, every country. And, uh, and this is really constituting in, in the very most of the countries that I know the, the legal system uh, a crime and offence. And the reaction is, uh, is, really, uh, is really strong and the collaboration uh, according to international conventions from, from, from the courts that are initiating this type of action in Spain with the other uh, administration of justice from any other yes. country are almost immediate. Yes. And if you are not the parent who's living with a child, who's frightened of this happening, but you are the parent who does not have the child and who wants to have the child, I suppose all we can say is that there is no alternative to going through the legal system. You have to persuade a court that you should be the parent who would be entitled to that child. Yeah. And you can't just go and do this on your own because you'll get into serious trouble. Exactly. You have to use the courts if you want to change the, uh, the sense where that settlement, that divorce uh, sentence was, was regulated because the, the circumstances when you were separated, you were divorced, have changed and therefore you want to change that system, uh, you have to use the courts. You cannot simply do your own uh, decisions on your own. Yeah. Uh, and if you're living in Spain, but the court that made the original decision is, say, in the United States, you have to go back to the court in the United States, or is there anything you can do here in Spain? You can do it here in Spain in case that you are really having the permanent residency in Spain. Uh, this is really supposed that if you want, if this family is willing to start up this process in Spain, is because they, they're really a long-term residents in Spain. It's not just because you're yes. visiting Spain. So you have to prove, of course, uh, that because the, the court will consider uh, himself that they are not really uh, having the right jurisdiction. They, can, they are not competent to, 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 yes. to be able to deal with this matter. Yeah, Miguel, thank you. Uh, very difficult subject. I hope you found that at least of some use. Uh, if you would like to speak to Miguel or his team, they're Details are on the information box with this video. Uh, there are also links to the guide about international child abduction and to some of our other family law guides. If you like this video, please like us or follow us. And whether you do that or not, we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Goodbye.